Wow. I think my dad used to play one of these. Look, hey, handsome. You totally want to have some fun. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Try your luck with a lady. What the hell? Totally awesome. Let's play, dude. All right, lady. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. Oh, did your ball drain? Total bummer, dude. Must have been too many beers. <laughs> you got this. Oh, yeah. Oh. Tap my buttons, baby. Hit me with your best shot. Rack up those points. That's right. My daddy taught me how to treat a lady. <laughs> oh, yeah. More, more. Yo, Bobby. Oh, bummer. Gag me with a spoon. You all right, man? Try me again sometime, handsome. Come back to the party. We're about to play some beer pong. Howdy, Clint. Howdy, Clint. Back for more, partner. more, partner. I wish I knew how to quit you. Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we give you the inside tips you need to make great video. Everyone talks about the types of shots when it comes to your characters. Medium shot, medium close, close up wide, two shot, all that. But we, we rarely hear talk about the types of shots where your character's not in the shot, the, the shots of the space that they're in. And it may be shots of what they're uh, looking at or interacting with or even what they're not, but that's there with them and has some relationship to them. Now there's the POV shot, but it's such a specialized, uh, unique shot. Uh, but I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about all those other shots. Uh, like we had in the Lady Luck shot. Well, the question is, whose viewpoint are those shots? And how do you shoot them so they work when your character's moving through a space? In the opening of the Lady Luck shoot, we wanted to show the space before he got in uh, to sort of foreshadow what he's gonna see and add significance to the Lady Luck machine itself. So we did a slow push in on the space I'd sort of establish it and to sort of foreshadow that someone's gonna come and enter that space. So when he enters, um, he's moving through the space, we move and slide with him, and he moves along a wall, and we look at uh, those, uh, the 80 memorabilia shots on the wall that he's looking at, which sort of set up the 80s look of the Lady Luck machine. Now a static shot of those images on the wall wouldn't have worked, uh, and a POV shot would have not made any sense. Uh, so since he was moving, we wanted the shots to be moving as well. So we shot panning shots and sliding shots, and the latter worked giving us that feeling of movement. When he turns and notices the pinball machines, we did a slow moving sliding shot as well, parallel to the machines. Now why do they work? They're not his POV shot. No, they're ours, the audience. It's as if we were a ghost in the space looking around with him. We watch him walk in, we take a closer look at what he's looking at on the wall. Now if those shots were static, it would have been too jarring. It would have drawn too much attention to the fact that it was our viewpoint. So it made sense to have them move slightly in the same uh, direction of action as he was moving. When he turns to look at the pinball machines, he's now no longer moving. But it made sense for us to have a slight 
move and pan shot with the pinball machines because he was looking at them, checking them out, and we as the audience are looking and checking them out as well. Then when he plays the game, we get a shot of the back glass of Lady Luck straight on and various tight angles of the pinball table itself as he's playing. Then we get insert shots of his hand on the flipper button and his hips. These are all actions that we as an audience member, if we were there, would look at. Shots that tell the story. A ball snaps into place. A plunger shoots the ball. Ball bouncing against the bumpers. Hand on a flipper button. Flipper hitting a ball. Score going up, etc. Now we weren't sure what was gonna work, so we shot a lot of variations. We shot static shots, a pan, a slide with a pan, a slide without a pan. We did push-in shots on the Lady Luck machine and pullbacks as well. And for the pinball gameplay, we shot a lot of tight shots um, and wide of the table as well. More shots than we actually ended up using, just so that we could see what would work and to give ourselves options. For instance, the shots uh, of Lady Luck inside the machine kind of worked to build up some of the feelings that she was having during the game. Now, when we were shooting tight shots of the pinball machine, it was a little tricky. We're trying to show um, the ball and certain actions happening with it. Now, we can't follow the ball around because it's too fast and when we're that tight, uh, it's just not gonna happen. So what we had to do was set up certain shots where we waited for something to happen. Normally, um, in a pinball, uh, uh, in a situation like this, you would have a prop department and they would actually take the, uh, the top glass out and would slide in a smaller piece of glass that would just cover the area of our shot, of our tight shot, so that we get those nice reflections. But it would allow us to drop the ball in just out of frame and get it right where we needed it, like, like coming over and having a flipper hit it. Now without that, in, in our case, it meant that we had to sit on a shot like that of the spinner and wait for Manu, who was playing the game to uh, off camera, to hit that shot. Um, which actually wasn't a problem because he's a big pinball aficionado and he competes. Now, let's talk a little bit about the shots of Courtney as Lady Luck. Now, I know that she's, you know, an actor in the shot. We're talking about non-character shots, but in a way it kind of applies because she's an embodiment of the pinball machine. You know, maybe she's a figment of his imagination or she's the a pinball succubus that draws men to their doom. So in this case, the audience viewpoint, they, we see her materialize against the wall. So we, uh, in her uh, medium close up, we shot up the wall without her, an empty plate, so that we could then dissolve her, or that is have her appear in place. And then we had her way in the background in the two shot. Um, to have her very separate from him, and she's only focusing on him. She doesn't focus on Clint when he walks in or any of the environment because she's um, an embodiment of the machine that he's playing. It's like she's in his head as he's playing, saying these things to him. Oh, tap my buttons, baby. You totally got this. Uh, so, from the audience viewpoint, we shot it, even though she's physically in the space and she's a human being, in a way uh, to try to embody uh, uh, the essence of the machine. So that's one way to look at and think about how to shoot um, shots of the environment that your character is in, uh, that they're looking at, interacting with, or not, that, uh, that are in some way uh, related to them, whether it's something on a wall, a pinball machine, or the embodiment of the pinball machine that's sucking quarters out of his pocket. But let us know what works for you or you found at work uh, in the comments. Thanks for watching. Check out PullMyFocus.tv for the companion articles that go along uh, with our videos. Also, we have much longer videos now that are much more in-depth 
on various topics about uh, videography and filmmaking, pre-production, all that stuff, uh, for sale. Link in the description below. If you get value out of our YouTube videos, you would definitely get value out of these courses. And if you don't see a course there you would like, uh, let us know and uh, we'll make one.